Hi, I'm Frank Stearns, President of Definitive Technology. At Definitive Technology, our motto is, what obsession sounds like. What do we mean by that? When it comes to making things sound their absolute best, we have a hard time believing that good enough is good enough. We're the top American premium loudspeaker brand, offering a full assortment of high-performance loudspeakers. We offer speakers for home theater, for stereo listening, subwoofers, architectural and outdoor speakers, and now a premium soundbar with Heos built in. Over the next hour, we'll take you through Definitive's acoustic research and development facilities in Baltimore and tell you more about our loudspeaker technologies. You'll learn about our BP and demand series loudspeakers, our descent series subwoofers, and our architectural and outdoor offerings. Let me now turn it over to Eric McBride to take you through Definitive Technology. Hello, and welcome to Inside Sound United. My name is Eric McBride, and I'm the Premium Audio Brand Manager. And today is very exciting. I'm back at Sound United's Acoustic Research and Development Facility, or like we like to call it, ARAD. And I have a special guest with me today, Mr. Matt Lyons, who is the VP of Technology and Chief Designer for Definitive Technology. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing great. Excellent. Very excited to have you guys here. Well, we're excited to be here. What can you tell us about ARAD? Like, what do you guys do here? <clears throat> Well, I mean, this is really the brain trust for the whole brand. This is where we bring all the technology together. We marry the design elements with all the engineering and the performance. We do all the final voicing here. And this, to me, is the sort of heart and soul of the definitive technology brand, with all of our engineers and designers working together. And do you have the final say? I have the final responsibility and the final say. Excellent. So. That's great. So we got the right guy here. Yes, right? absolutely. Sweet. Awesome. With decades of loudspeaker engineering experience at their disposal, Definitive Technology has developed a vanishing architectural line of speakers that do not sacrifice sound quality for aesthetics. The DI line of architectural speakers utilizes the same driver technology found in the beloved in-room models with minimal visual footprint. The DI architectural loudspeakers from Definitive Technology are an ideal solution for discrete home theater stereo, and distributed audio applications. Now let's take a look at the DI lineup. The line consists of two LCR models utilizing a six and a half inch and a five and a half inch BDSS mid-bass driver. We also have five different in-ceiling round models, your traditional eight and six inch, and then we offer a five and a half, four and a half, and even a three and a half solution. Again, all using the BDSS and annealed tweeter. For those of you that do not like round and are using square accents, we offer two in-wall or in-ceiling square models, utilizing a six and a half and a five and a half inch mid-bass cone. We also offer a dual voice coil model and a bipolar in-wall model, perfect for surround applications. The breadth of the DI line from a definitive technology ensures that listeners will be stunned both visually and sonically no matter the application. Now let's talk about the Definitive Technology Demand Series. If you're looking for a compact bookshelf speaker, we have the Demand D7. It features a one inch annealed aluminum tweeter, 2020 wave alignment lens, a four and a half inch polypropylene BDSS driver, and a linear response waveguide. For those craving something more substantial, we have the Demand D9, featuring the one inch annealed aluminum tweeter, 2020 wave alignment lens, five and a quarter inch polypropylene BDSS driver, utilizing the linear response waveguide, and we have a base radiator as well. When the number one consideration in a bookshelf is performance, we move up to the Demand D11 bookshelf speaker, featuring a one inch annealed aluminum tweeter, 2020 wave alignment lens, six and a half inch polypropylene BDSS driver, again using the linear response waveguide, and we have a larger base radiator as well. Moving up to the towers. If you're looking for a smaller form factor in a tower speaker, the Demand D15 is your choice. Featuring a one inch annealed aluminum tweeter, 2020 wave alignments lens, five and a quarter mid-range BDSS with linear response waveguide and dual five and a quarter inch carbon fiber base drivers. We've also included dual eight inch base radiators. When only the finest will do, we top off the line with the Demand D17, 
featuring a one inch annealed aluminum tweeter, 2020 wave alignments lens, six and a half inch mid-range BDSS, linear response waveguide, dual six and a half inch carbon fiber base drivers, and dual 10 inch base radiators. For those of you interested in doing home theater, we offer a center channel called the D5C, one inch annealed tweeter, dual five and a quarter inch base drivers, measuring in at 11.25 inches in length, 19 inches wide, and six and a half in height. Now let's look at the Descend subwoofer lineup. The new definitive technology Descend subwoofer lineup consists of four different models, ranging in size from eight inch to 15 inch active woofers. The DN8 and DN10 both utilize a 500 watt Class D amplifier and are available in black and white finishes. The DN12 and DN15 utilize a 1500 watt Class H amplifier with sliding reel voltage and are available in black finishes only. All of the models will incorporate the DT3XR technology. Each woofer will utilize two passive radiators for each active driver. This allows the entire subwoofer line to perform to levels greatly above their expectations. The 56-bit DSP utilized on the DN12 and DN15 ensures the most accurate representation of the LFE signal is played back on the DT subs without damaging the unit. The DN12 and DN15 utilizes Class H amplifier delivers continuous power to cleanly reproduce sustained bass below 20 Hz. Intelligent phase control provides a full 360 degrees of customizable phase adjustment, always centered around the settings of the low pass filter. This allows the listener to dial in the proper phase adjustment without the smearing effects of the past. If you are wondering what Obsession looks like, look no further. The BP9000 series from Definitive Technology uses our patented forward-focused bipolar array, or FFBA, which creates unmatched cinematic performance resulting in the ultimate all-in-one immersive cinema loudspeaker. With a built-in subwoofer and a 3D height module, the BP series deliver uncompromised home cinema with powerful lows, smooth detailed mid-range, clear extended highs, in fully integrated Dolby Atmos and DTS-X 3D surround sound. Now let's take a look at the definitive BP9000 series lineup. Starting with the BP9020. It's the smallest of floor standards, but don't let that mislead you. The BP9020 uses a one inch aluminum dome tweeter and dual three and a half inch mid-rangers for the front array. The rear array consists of a single three and a half inch mid-range. The built-in 8-inch subwoofer is powered by a 150-watt Class D amplifier. As we go up the line, we have the BP9040. The BP9040 uses a 1-inch aluminum dome tweeter and dual 4.5-inch mid-range drivers for the front array. The rear array consists of a 1-inch aluminum tweeter and a single 4.5-inch mid-range. The built-in 8-inch subwoofer is powered by a 300-watt Class D amplifier and features dual 8-inch base radiators for extended low frequency. If you are looking for even more output, we have the BP9060. The BP9060 uses a 1-inch aluminum dome tweeter and dual 4.5-inch mid-range drivers for the front array. The rear array consists of a 1-inch aluminum tweeter and a single 4.5-inch mid-range. The built-in 10-inch subwoofer is powered by a 300-watt Class D amplifier and features dual 10-inch base radiators, capable of creating low frequencies down to an astonishing 18 hertz. Our flagship of the line is the BP9080, the ultimate in home theater. The BP9080 uses a one-inch aluminum dome tweeter and dual five and a quarter inch mid-range drivers for the front array. The rear array consists of a one-inch aluminum dome tweeter and dual five and a quarter inch mid-ranges. The built-in 12-inch subwoofer is powered by a 455-watt Class D amplifier and features dual 12-inch base radiators, increasing the low frequency extension down to 16 Hz. The integrated elevation module features a 1-inch aluminum dome tweeter and a 5.25-inch mid-range. Integrating a center and surround speakers has never been easier with the BP9000 series. We have three options for center channels and two surround options. Let's take a look at the centers first. 
The Compact CS9040 uses a one inch aluminum dome tweeter, dual four and a half inch mid ranges, and an integrated eight inch base radiator. Looking for a larger center, we have the CS9060, which uses a one inch aluminum dome tweeter, dual four and a half inch mid ranges, and an integrated eight inch subwoofer powered by a class D amplifier. Our flagship center channel is the CS9080, which uses a one inch aluminum dome tweeter, dual five and a quarter inch mid ranges, and an eight inch integrated subwoofer powered by a class D amplifier, also with a 10 inch base radiator. So now that we've uh, had a chance to look at the definitive lineup, well, what can you tell me about Studio 3D Mini? It's a heck of a piece. I have one at home. I absolutely love it. Uh, but I keep hearing this like tripolar technology. What, what is that exactly? Great, yeah. So we're very proud of the 3D Mini. And when you think about definitive, back the whole way in our history, we were creating great home theater sound, room filling sound, just enormous size to the image. So the 3D Mini, just think of the name, where it's like we want to create a three-dimensional soundstage, but we're doing it from an amazingly small acoustic package. To do that, the tripolar technology helps us energize the entire room and create that massive sound field from an incredibly small acoustic package. Right, that's incredible. Well, it's definitive product, so we want it to have massive dynamic range, obviously deep bass from the subwoofer, and that that overall just enveloping sound that right. you expect from definitive technology. Yeah, one thing to note too though is the dialogue intelligibility, the vocals, how clean and crisp they are. Yeah, well really. if, if you can't create a great home theater system if you can't understand the dialogue. Right? Movies are mostly about dialogue. So we work very hard with the selection of our transducers, the voicing and our DSP to create that dialogue intelligibility, the crisp sound, but at the same time having it weave itself right into the sonic image of the right. entire movie. Yeah, yeah. well it shows, it definitely shows. Yeah. Now, Heos. Yeah. So Heos is obviously an amazing way to, to listen to music content. Um, can, tell me about it with the, the Studio 3D Mini. Like, what, what did you guys do as far as testing? Uh, you just tell me about it. Well, <clears throat> so this is our first product where we're able to take the Sound United technology of Heos and build it into the system. I'm very thrilled. Uh, that we're actually able to do that. Heos gives you access to all the streaming content you want. You can get high resolution music with a very intuitive app. So for Definitive, this is the first opportunity we have had to marry the Heos technology with the performance and the, the design elements of a Definitive technology product. So yeah. it's a really exciting product for us with regard to incorporation of the Heos technology. And the app is very cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the other benefit of the Heos technology is now Definitive technology can mix and match with any of our other brands at Sound United that also have the Heos technology. Yeah. So we're just enlarging the entire ecosystem uh, and all the opportunities for products. So Definitive is very excited to be part of that ecosystem. That's now. excellent, that's excellent. Now, build quality. When I first took this out of the box, I could not believe how heavy it was. Yeah. I was like, this little thing, this heavy, what's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> so when you think about it, what makes things heavy, well, it's all the performance elements that we're putting into the product. You have oversized magnets, right? You have power supplies, electronics, and then you need a stiff enclosure so the enclosure itself doesn't radiate and make bad noises. So you need to have that entire structure to be rigid so that the speaker itself only plays the music you're putting into it, it doesn't start to rattle and shake and distort the music. So, you know, there is something to say about heft tells you something about the sound. Right. And there is a ton of technology and a ton of performance built into that tiny package. Tiny little package. Yeah. It truly is an incredible product. I yeah. absolutely love it. The Studio 3D Mini is a Heos enabled product. Right. So great way to listen to music. So what can we expect from that sound bar musically? So, <clears throat> of course, Definitive's heritage has always been about great sound and music, musical reproduction. Mm -hmm. Heos gives us a pipeline, a high definition pipeline, so that when you listen to music over Heos, you're not talking about low bitrate crappy sound. Heos gives us high resolution stream music, so we're getting all of the music, all of the resolution into the product. And of course, the 3D Mini does a, an amazing job of reproducing all the natural timbre of the instruments and the music. At the same time, once again, throwing an incredibly large sound stage. So you need that quality of input stream in order to get that music listening experience that Heos provides. Yeah, that's great. Lately, I'm seeing a lot of content with immersive audio formats. What audio formats does the DT Studio Mini support? 
The 3D Mini includes both Dolby Atmos and DTSX. These are the latest technologies that you want to have in your home theater. They're the, this is the first bar where we've incorporated them. And one of the, the exciting things about that, of course, is not only do you get this, this horizontal image that's large, but these technologies create a whole umbrella of sound. And the 3D Mini actually does this in an amazing way with our advanced signal processing that you can get that big sound once again from the, the tiny loudspeaker, from right. the tiny sound bar. Right. So we can expect almost hear things coming from all different directions. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. That's wild. The tripolar technology married to Atmos and DTSX will give you an amazing sound feel. That's great. So with the demand series, we have a very interesting tweeter. What can you tell us about it? So <clears throat> this tweeter and the evolution of this tweeter have always been central to the definitive sound. The annealed aluminum dome tweeter gives us the crisp highs and the detail that we expect and that you expect from a definitive technology loudspeaker. In the demand series, we faced some new challenges. We wanted to make sure that the sound stage was large and that we had excellent off-axis response. And so the, the, the loudspeaker itself, the tweeter, is offset. What that does is it smooths out the frequency response both on and off-axis. And so this is a, a, an approach which will, as usual for Definitive, give you much bigger sound, crisp highs. Right. So what is the benefit of having smoother response off axis because on axis is essentially the sweet spot right, right? so off axis like that's to help with the general audience a larger area it, of coverage it, certainly, it gives you a larger sweet spot yeah. but when you listen to sound in a room your ears are hearing both the direct sound and the reflected sound energy mm -hmm. when you have better smoother flatter off axis response it makes the direct sound merry to the ambient sound, and you get just a much more natural reproduction of the ambience within the recording. Yeah, that makes sense. And the phase guide. Yeah. What can you tell us about that? Well, once again, it's about the dispersion of yeah. the tweeter. It's about making sure that on and off axis, it has smooth response. And we get down to just looking at the, the millimeters, right, <laughs> of, of placement and making sure that the frequency and the phase response of the tweeter is 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 maximized right and that's once again you need that for the natural timbre right and for the dispersion right so it's a key part of the element how do you even measure something like that oh we have uh, at arid we have amazing uh, acoustic measurements all right we have facilities that enable us to measure all these things we can even measure the entire loudspeaker 360 degrees around wow that's cool I was walking around and I saw a room that had, looked like uh, it had a bunch of cheese attached to the walls. <laughs> yeah. What's that the room cheese. all about? So it's a semi-anechoic chamber. All of the walls absorb the sound, yeah. right? And so what we do in there is we measure the system response of the loudspeaker. And <clears throat> that room, in combination with the advanced measurement techniques that we utilize, enables us to look at the frequency response of the loudspeaker. So to get those pristine highs, to make sure that we have the on and off axis response, we take the product into that room and we measure all of the frequency responses. And that room enables us to get a very crisp, clean measurement, right? Or a measurement that will accurately tell us what's going on. Wow, that's really cool. Let's talk about mid-range. When I look at that mid-range, I'm like, wow, there's a lot of technology there. What can you tell us about it? Well, the heart and soul of Definitive Technologies drivers has always been our BDSS, all right? And that's our uh, dual balanced surround system. So we have the conventional surround at the outside of the cone, but we marry that with a surround at the inside of the cone. And you'll also notice at the center, right, we have our linear response waveguide. And we have found over years of development that that linear response waveguide will once again give you this amazing on and off axis response. It actually spreads out the high frequency energy from the loudspeaker itself, giving it a broader, wider soundstage over a, a, a wider range of frequencies. Right, and because you have the extra uh, attachment, the extra surround, right. It's tighter, more accurate, you can expect from the driver? Absolutely. Right. It can move further with less distortion, distortion. And that means it plays louder and cleaner. Excellent. That's good. That's what we want. Yep. So when it comes to the measurement process with the mid-range, how do you measure a linear response waveguide? Yeah, so we have a very advanced piece of, of tech called our Near Field Scanner. It's an automated system that measures 360 degrees around the loudspeakers, and, and it actually does this all by itself. So we push the button and it goes, and it takes numerous measurements. And in, in so doing, we map the entire sound field that the speaker puts out. Wow, that's wild. Yeah. Can't wait to see it. As we work our way down the speaker, I notice these absolutely gorgeous bass drivers. What can you tell us about 
So that, that's a purpose-built woofer, you notice it doesn't have the linear response waveguide because it's optimized to make bass. And the cone itself is a carbon fiber structure, which makes it incredibly stiff. What you can't see from the outside of the loudspeaker is the massive magnet structure behind it. That's what gives the force behind the bass. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a purpose-built, immensely powerful woofer that gives that deep bass that you expect from definitive technology. Oh, that's fantastic. As I walk around this unit, I don't see any ports, but I do see these big white things on the side of it. Well, what are those? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, for definitive technology, uh, we make great use of the sub-bass radiator. Ports, all right, the problem with ports, they're used in many loudspeakers, but ports are basically pipes, organ pipes, and organ pipes are built to resonate, and they create lots of mid-range distortion. Definitive technology, we use bass radiators because they don't have the problems, right, that ports do. They don't chuff. They don't make bad noises. Nice. They don't resonate in the mid-range. Our sub-bass radiators are basically drivers without a magnet structure. So it's internally coupled to the drive units in the speaker through the air. It's a mass on a spring. It extends the low frequencies, gives us greater bass, and it does so without creating any other distortions. So the tricky thing with uh, bass radiators is you need to make sure they can move great distances without hitting any limits so that you can get that deep bass that you need. So we spend a lot of time optimizing the performance of our passive radiators. Most other companies will just take a, a hollow tube, stick it in the back of the speaker and say, I'm done. And I'm done. Yeah. That doesn't give you the bass and the dynamics that you expect from definitive technology. And how did you determine the size, how, like the size of the bass radiator? <laughs> so the bass radiator, uh, simply put, you want to have twice the radiating surface area for your bass radiator that you do for your active woofers. Oh, interesting. That makes know. sure that you don't have too much excursion. Ah, excellent. That's great. And you developed this here? Oh, these are all purpose-built for each loudspeaker. So, yeah, every part of this was designed by us. So I assume you have a jig set up that we, that we could see? Oh, we have to test these yeah. things? Absolutely. We, we test our, our base radiators as diligently and as thoroughly as we do any of our drive tech now. Excellent. Tell me about the jig. So the test jig is specific to the base radiators. And one of the difficult things about getting a test where you can understand the performance of the base radiator alone is it has to be energized by a reference woofer. So the test jig that we've created enables you to measure each passive radiator in a controlled experimental situation so we can maximize the performance of the base radiator. And once again, it's all about linear excursion, making sure that we have accurately uh, tracked the compliance and the mass of the system, which is what determines the resonance and the performance of the radiator. Yeah, makes total sense. Love it. The brain of the loudspeaker is the crossover. What can you tell us about the crossover in the demand series? Well, I think when you talk about the crossover, you have to talk about the process of voicing the loudspeaker. Because this is, once you have all these magical transducers, you need to marry them all together. And the, the crossover itself is, is the, the device that simply divides the incoming bandwidth and sends high frequencies to the tweeter, mid-range to the mid-range, and bass to the woofers. Sounds pretty simple. Mm -hmm. You use your traditional components, capacitors, resistors, and inductors. What we've found is that in order to achieve the definitive sound, we need to make sure that we're selecting the appropriate types of those elements. So we use capacitors with very low dissipation factors so that they don't s smear the sound in time. We use large oversized air core inductors and ferrite inductors where appropriate so that you get the current handling capability and the dynamics in the base. So to, to achieve the definitive sound, the crossover is just the final element that brings all of the transducers together and achieves our sonic goals. That's excellent. The cabinets on the demand series, absolutely gorgeous. White, I want it in my house. <laughs> what can you tell us? Is there any acoustic like uh, elements to it? <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Uh, you know, and I appreciate you saying that. Mm -hmm. Definitive is known for great design, and these are beautiful loudspeakers. But the cabinet is an incredibly important part of the loudspeaker. The thing about the loudspeaker cabinet is you don't want it to move. You don't want it to radiate. We want it to be rigid, and we want it to be still and quiet. So the internal bracing, the materials choice, even the aluminum baffle creates rigidity and makes sure that the cabinet doesn't move. So the cabinet is very important in that it wants to stay out of the way of the sound. So 
And it should also look beautiful. Look beautiful. These do. They absolutely, absolutely do. Yeah. So how do you measure like resonances in the cabinet? Yeah, so there are techniques that you can use. You can put what's called an accelerometer on the loudspeaker. You can measure the micro movements of the cabinet. But we even do in the design process, we'll do simulations of how the cabinet is going to move before we even start building it. So the cabinet design is integral to the loudspeaker from the very beginning. beginning. And this is all about just controlling what's happening internally so that you do not hear it coming out. You right? want to hear the drivers, yeah, hear not the, drivers, the cabinet. Not the cabinet. That's excellent. Definitive technology has a long history with powered subwoofers. What can you tell us about the new Descend series? Well, yes, Definitive does have a long history with powered subwoofers, and Definitive is known for deep dynamic bass. And this goes back to our heritage with our Supercube lines. The Descend is the evolution of that heritage, and it's setting a new benchmark for bass performance for Definitive technology. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what are some of the key technologies in the new Descent? So you have to start with the transducers and the base radiators, our 3XR technology. And once again, most subwoofers will typically just use a ported technology, right, in order to make base. It has limits in how deep it can go, and it makes lots of noise. We, with our 3XR technology, marry the base radiators to the drivers themselves in a very small enclosure that creates deep bass in some cases, or in a very large enclosure right. to make massive bass. Right. But it's about the sub bass radiator, it's about not having any other unlimited resonances like you would get from a port, and then the driver itself has to be massive. It has to be able to move great distances in right. order to reproduce the low frequencies. Right. So that has to then marry to the amplifier that's built in. The amplifier, you need lots and lots of dynamic power. It needs to be able to hear the, it needs to be able to deliver the high current transients of the music itself. And then you want to have with that digital signal processing, advanced processing that enables you to create that great sound. And the other thing that we've done with Descend is that we have, we've, we've worked a lot with the group delay to make sure that you don't get any anomalies in your transient response associated with filtration. Many subwoofers will do a lot of high passing and low passing and they don't look at the phase response. Hmm. With this line, we really set a new benchmark for what you would call attack, transient response, deep bass, right, by being very careful that we're looking at not only the amplitude response but also the phase response. Sure, so kind of in layman's terms, you know, if you're not paying attention to phase and you just plop a subwoofer in there and make some adjustments, it, you can very much hear the the discontinuity between the main loudspeaker and the sub in terms of when the bass is hitting. You, they actually sound like they're just time aligned, right? Yeah. And that, that's essentially what this, crew, this fixes? It, it's two <clears> things. <throat> yeah. One, yes, we have better phase alignment between the subwoofer and the speaker. Mm -hmm. And you want that for blending. Mm -hmm. You want the, the notes to seamlessly transition from the subwoofer to the loudspeaker. But on the low frequency end, we also want to make sure that we've minimized group delay so that we have tighter, deeper, deeper. accurate bass. So it's both ends of the spectrum on the bandwidth of the of the powered subwoofer. And that technology is found on which models? Oh, that's on all four oh, of the models. Nice, excellent, beautiful. We all know Definitive makes great in-room speakers, but for those of us that want to not see anything, what do you have? Anything? So, yes, we have a solution, right? right? So, Definitive has always been known for great sound and design, and our DI line of installed speakers are an amazing group of products. So we wanted to make sure that we brought all the quality of sound that you get in our in-room products and have them maximize performance in installed product. So the key to that is, of course, our drive units. Our drive units use our BDSS technology that enables the woofers to move great distances, makes the loudspeaker be able to play loud effortlessly with low distortion. Right. Of course, we're still going to use our definitive technology annealed aluminum tweeter. That's a key element to the sound of definitive technology. The important thing in the installed speakers is that you want to be able to maximize the on-axis and off-axis response. So all of the tweeters in the DI line can be aimed, can be pointed, can be oh, tilted wow. towards the listening position. Makes a huge difference in the quality of the sound. Excellent. Now, when you look at the speakers, right, what you see is these beautiful grills, right, with a, 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 a bezel that almost disappears. But that perf material, the grill itself, could have a huge impact on the quality of the sound. So the development process, we spent a lot of time 
optimizing the acoustic transparency of that grill material so you would get the big open sound at the same time achieving a look which is really stunning. So at the end of the day, we can expect to hear the DT sound from an in-wall in-ceiling loudspeaker. Absolutely. That's excellent. Great. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that sneak peek into our ARAD facility. We're extremely excited about the future direction of definitive technology. I'm sure you have many questions about the product technology that you saw today. Let me now turn it over to a live Q&A. Hello. We'd like to thank um, Matt and Eric for walking us through the Definitive Technology lineup. My name is Phil Jones from the Brand Activation Team, and I am really excited about our lineup of Definitive Technology speakers. We want to take some time and answer some of your questions. So do we have any questions that we can start covering? Let's see. Let's go to see what we got here. So the first question that's come in, um, which PP9000 series models come with height modules? Ah, that is a very good question. And I'm going to make these camera guys chase me again. <laughs> so, so what ends up happening is we have these height modules. They're called A90s. And this height module works with both the 9020, 9040, and 9060 BP towers. It's the, because those towers have the same width and, and length, um, this one module works on all of them. The 9080, on, on the other hand, is a lot larger, a little, a little larger, so this module would not fit on that particular speaker, so that height module is actually built in. So the only BP tower with the height module built into it is the 9080X, and all the rest of the BP towers, you can utilize the A90 height modules. Mm -hmm. uh, the next question that's uh, come out, uh, is what is FFBA and why is it important to definitive technologies? Oh. Forward focused um, bipolar is what we're talking about there. If you look at a BP tower, you'll notice that uh, if we pull the, uh, the, the grill off, that there's more drivers on the front of the speaker than on the rear. What that means is most of the energy that goes into the room comes from the front of the speaker, but then some energy is reflected back um, off a wall um, and then towards the listener. That adds a little bit of spaciousness to the sound while still maintaining a, um, a great center image. So you end up with a wider sound stage, but the singer is still locked dead center. So that's the benefit of forward focused bipolar array. Thanks, Phil. Uh, got another question coming in uh, from James. Is there a planned update for the 3D Mini, which would allow added surround speakers. Currently, the um, Studio 3D Mini um, is not compatible with um, rear speakers. The whole goal, as Matt mentioned, of a Studio 3D Mini is a gigantic immersive sound from an incredibly compact and simple to integrate or install package. And um, because of the great um, immersive surround sound algorithms that are built into that um, bar, you still get that big immersive sound. but keep it really simple without having to have the rear. So currently, um, rears are not an available option on the, the Studio 3D Mini. Uh, next question that's come in. Uh, definitive technology has been using an aluminum annealed tweeter. What does annealed mean and why is that <clears throat> important? Good question. So if you look at um, uh, domes or um, that make up tweeters, they have to be very rigid and they have to be very light because they have to move quite fast. So you'll see um, lots of materials being utilized and one material a lot of times would be maybe metals and one of those metals is aluminum. Aluminum can be, is very light and it can be very stiff. But sometimes you can get a harshness from an aluminum tweeter. Annealing is when you take a metal and you basically heat and cool it. And what it does is it changes the molecular structure of that particular metal and makes it a little softer and more um, bendable and compliant. What that does is that gives you all of, uh, by annealing the tweeter, you get all the benefits of aluminum, but you also get a smoother, um, smoother sound, which is beneficial um, acoustically. Anything special about the crossovers in the Man Series speakers? Um, well, we always talk about the fact that if you look at all the great drivers, if you look at the, the tweeter, the woofers, um, the mid-bass drivers, super high quality stuff. But those, think of those drivers as basically ingredients. It's really the, the crossover that's kind of the recipe that determines how um, all of those components work well together to give you a great meal, which is 
great sound. And Matt mentioned that they spent a lot of time going through and trying to choose the right components, inductors, capacitors, the type of inductors that they use and the type of resistors they use to give you the best sound. So there is a lot of care that goes into those crossovers. And to me, it's like magic how Matt and these guys do it, but it really does help um, the demand speaker sound outstanding. Rules asked the question, uh, do we make in-wall subwoofers? Ah, we do make an in-wall subwoofer. Um, we have, what is it called, the IW series. So sometimes people want their entire system to be completely hidden. So that means in walls, maybe in ceilings, and people love their base. So we also do offer um, an in-wall subwoofer option still. And that's great for you custom integrators. Any plans for angled ceiling speakers in the DI range? Hmm. Um, well, one thing about the, the, um, the speakers that we have with the DI range, they're designed to be really um, unobtrusive, unobtrusive and easy to install. So you do have the ability to angle the tweeter. Normally the thing that needs to be angled the most um, that would have the biggest impact on um, frequency response is if your tweeter is off axis. So having the ability to angle the tweeter um, does give you a lot, um, help b solve a lot of those problems with off axis frequency response. We do make, of course, the ultimate in wall for that person that wants to have an angled speaker in the ceiling. Like I utilize those in my home. T tip on those, by the way, um, my, I, my house has a vaulted ceiling. And because it has a vaulted ceiling, it's kind of difficult to put an in-wall in for Dolby Atmos. Well, now because I have an ultimate in-wall that is actually angled, the speaker actually fires down in my wall, even though it is um, in a, um, a vaulted ceiling. So there is, I can see an advantage of having an angled speaker. And if you need an angled speaker, maybe an ultimate in-wall may be the, the speaker for you. A couple more here. Um, I see you're using Class D in the DN8 and DN10. Uh, subs and class H in the DN12 and DN15. Uh, can you explain the difference in the amp architecture between well, those two? Well, the, the, the goal of, like, when you have a subwoofer, you, you need a lot of power. But you also want that power to be efficient and compactly packaged so it fits neatly into the, into the subwoofers. So we offer two different systems, um, Class D and Class H. Both of them offer a, um, a high amount of efficiency for the size of those amplifier modules. A Class H amplifier utilizes a sliding, sliding rail voltage. Basically, the voltage or power supply varies based on the demand for wattage that the speaker is asking for. And that is monitored real time. So it gives you really great, impactful bass, and it tends to also put deliver more output. So if you look at the Class H, those are found on our bigger um, descend subwoofers such as the DN12 and the DN15. Cool. Last question that's come in. Um, on the BP9000 series, since those have integrated subs, uh, what's the best way to, to use them uh, with uh, additional subwoofers? Okay. So couple of things. One of the benefits of having a pair of BP towers is if you have a pair of BP towers, you literally have now two subwoofers. And one of the benefits of having two subwoofers is when you put a subwoofer in a room, it interacts with the room. And you'll end up with peaks and dips. So sometimes you have too much space in one seat and sometimes you have too little. By using multiple subwoofers, the peak of one sub is actually canceled out by the peak of another. And you end up with even more, more even bass response. As you add more subwoofers, you even out the bass response even more in the room. So, it's great to have a pair of BP towers, maybe in the front and in the back, and Josh would like it if he had them in the rear for the surrounds as well. And you can also add the, the additional subwoofers. What you end up with is much smoother bass response, deep, smooth bass wherever you're located. Now, that leads us to another question that I get asked all the time. Since these um, speakers have the subwoofers built in, a lot of times people will opt not to buy an additional external subwoofer. But they have a receiver and they go, well, how do I set up my Denon or Marantz receiver for, um, for these particular speakers? So if you have a pair of BP towers and you, have, you do not have an external subwoofer, what you would do is you would go into the receiver, set the receiver to large and the subwoofer to none. When you do that, all of the bass 
from the main speakers will be played back to the main. All of the bass that's from the point one will be played back through the main. And if you have smaller speakers for your surrounds and your ear end ceilings, all of the bass that those speakers cannot play will be directed to your mains. So now you, it acts like two subwoofers. Um, another question, because that we get asked all the time, is there's an LFE output on the back of a BP tower. A little input that you can use as if it was a powered subwoofer. It's there, but don't you ever, 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 ever use that. Never use it. What ends up happening is Matt and those guys at Definitive Technology went out of their way to make sure that that powered base module, that powered subsystem is blended perfectly, perfectly with the mid-range and tweeter. And, but the problem is, as you turn up the base of a normal subwoofer, it starts to kind of, um, as you boost it, you may also start boosting some of the mid-range, which has an impact on the voices. So basically, Michael Jackson starts sounding like Barry White, which is a bad, bad thing. So BP towers have what's called intelligent bass control. So as you turn up the volume of the subwoofer, what ends up happening is the slope or where, where it meets the mid-ranges will change. So, so the benefit of that is I can increase the bass without impacting the voice. And we do this all the time. We take like a Michael Jackson track and it's with a lot of bass in it. And as I turn the bass up and down on the, on the, on the back of the BP tower, the subwoofer, I mean, his voice does not change. You just get more bass. So the moral of the story is there's an LFE on the back of that um, BP tower. Don't use it. Set your speakers to large and send all the bass to your speakers. That way, do not use the LFE and you'll get better um, audio performance. Okay, any other questions since we've been talking, Josh? Because I've been rambling on. A few, few more questions have come in. So uh, Adam asks, uh, any chance of getting new white grills, the current grills are cream eggshell? And uh, I'll, I'll take that one. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I'd say is that uh, come see us at CDA 2022, where we can share a lot more uh, <laughs> about our upcoming roadmap of uh, definitive technology, architectural products, as well as uh, our updates on uh, roadmaps uh, for the uh, uh, loudspeakers that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot more is coming. Uh, you know, as Frank Stearns mentioned earlier, on a lot more is coming to the definitive technology brand, and we're super excited about what's uh, in the pipeline here. Let's see if anything. Um, has uh, come in through. Uh, Royal, thank you. Uh, your, your support is greatly appreciated. I think <laughs> at this point, uh, we're, we're now ready for okay. uh, the last part of this and our favorite part of this. Uh, Phil, I turn it back to you. Okay, so, so one more thing that I want to point out that I really like about the fan of technology. Um, you heard Matt and Eric talk about the um, BDS um, woofers and the aluminum nil tweeters and, and all of those things. You see those components found in all of the different in, in, of the all of the different definitive technology speakers. He, you saw him talk about it about when he talked about the end ceilings and of course the BP towers, the demands. Our our on walls have this technology. Our satellite speakers utilize this technology. So why is that a benefit to you or to an integrator? It allows you to choose the component that works best for your application. So if you need to use um, in ceilings and maybe BP towers in the front and maybe a pair of demands for your rears, or you want to use maybe a pro monitor on the wall for your height modules with a pair of demands, um, the benefit is you have the ability to mix and match and still get a smooth, even um, sound and, er and everything matches beautifully. So if you're looking for definitive sound and you, you can just pick the component in our lineup that best fits your customers or your needs. And that's one of the benefits that I love most about the fan of technology. We offer a great solutions for everyone. We spent a little bit of time talking about um, the fan of technology. And it's really cool to hear from Matt and Eric. If you want to hear more from guys like Matt um, at, at the fan of technology and a lot of our other industry experts, please subscribe, like and subscribe to our Sound United YouTube training channel. So go to Sound United 
and uh, go to YouTube and look for Sci United Training and make sure you like and subscribe. We have tons and tons of extensive webinars with people such as Matt from Definitive. Um, you'll also see people from Odyssey and DTSX and, and studio professionals. And you, so if you really want to dive in to um, our Sci United products or you just want to learn how to best integrate or place speakers at a home theater, that is a great resource for you. So make sure that you support our Cyanide Training YouTube site. So um, I'm excited about Definitive Technology. Hopefully you've learned something or got a little bit of additional information that you may not have learned. Be meeting Matt is actually a, a great thing. So we had a great time and hopefully you had a great time too. And hopefully we will see you tomorrow. So take care and happy selling.